Hello everybody with the misfortune of watching today. I'm gonna try something a bit different today. Something rather personal. For starters, this isn't going to be a gameplay video like you're used to, but rather something I've been gaining power for over the past two years to talk about. I had accrued a massive backlog of games over the years that got out of control, and at some point, it became too much. For starters, I don't consider myself a core gamer, as you would say. I'm more of a handheld junkie, you know? Someone who prefers Game Boy Advances and DS's and Nintendo Switches and PSP's. I don't really like consoles all that much. I was completely overwhelmed by all the quality games available for the Nintendo Switch, as uh, most people seem to be. One thing led to another, and I ended up mass massing such a huge backlog of games, I wasn't sure how I was really ever going to tackle them, much less start to even attempt tackling them to begin with. For a while, I was just resigned to the fact that I was never going to really go back and finish games like Skies of Arcadia Legends or Mega Man X Command Mission. That others like Bayonetta and Breath of the Wild would just lay there unfinished while I sort of just stuck to playing the same games like Splatoon and Pokemon and Mega Man and Smash, as I had always have. One day, after scrounging around some comments on a Twitter thread, I had come across a page called HowLongToBeat.com. Now this page, this site, is dedicated to helping players figure out the length of time it would take to complete unfinished games, and to amass your backlog and one easy to manage list. So I started doing this around 2018, just a few months prior to the start of my backlog journey. And I was daunted, <laughs> daunted I say, by the apparent months worth of time I had listed. <laughs> like a schoolboy who didn't want to do their homework, I just kind of stared at it. I just went to sleep and uh, I just tried to forget that I even like attempted to do it in the first place that even spent that much in the first place. Around February of 2019, about a couple of months later, I beat Fire Emblem Awakening. I had already finished about halfway through the game where the time skip popped up. That's where I ended up taking a break. I'm not too sure why, I think it was the same time around Fates coming out, which I didn't finish either. It was really nice going back and finishing, seeing characters I hadn't seen in a while. I didn't seem to forget any of the key points in the plot, but the classic style gameplay where the units can die permanently was pretty hard on me, probably added to my playtime overall. I didn't want to really see anybody die my first playthrough. I kind of wanted to see everybody's stories before I dealt with that. I didn't even really pair anybody up romantically at all, and that wasn't my motivation at the start. These two reasons combined kind of contributed to the length of time between me starting the game and me finishing it. Afterwards, about a couple months later in April, I saw a game on sale. It was a game called Iconoclasts. It was created entirely by one Joachim Cognac Sandberg. And this game lit a fire in me. Iconoclasts is a relatively decently length, story-driven metroidvania. It took about a week to beat, but that was enough that the game's overarching themes of limited resources and limited technology made me feel very nostalgic for games that I had played before, like Mega Man Legends, Tales of Symphonia, and most importantly of all, Skies of Arcadia. I could go on about how much I love Iconoclasts. It's bright, colorful sprites, and it's wonderful music. Just everything about it oozes character. And oh my god, it just made me love video games again. If you feel like you need to go through your backlog, I strongly suggest trying this one out before diving into it. It'll make you fall in love with games again. And while it may seem counterintuitive to add another game onto your backlog pile, it did a world of good for me in the long run, and I recommend it if you're willing to put in an extra 4-8 to eight hours. Now, after I had beat Iconoclast, I was feeling pretty nostalgic for the longest game that I owned in my library. Skies of Arcadia Legends is a very decently lengthy RPG, with a lot of things like crew members to find and enjoying your ship, or moonfish to find, or 
upgrades to get for your ship. It's really cool. It lets you play like a pirate in a grand adventure and lets you participate in sky battles. And while I seem to do well in almost every boss fight and ship battle, it still had a pretty high encounter rate and spells took time to grind for, which is probably why I took a break in the first place. And then again and again. I never really gained pass in this year. Anyways, when I eventually did beat it, I was uncertain what I was to do next. I could have kept beating old games if I felt like it, but I sort of wanted to pare down the titles bit by bit until I got to the point where they were long enough that I would already be in the habit of committing to beating them by the time I got to them. How Long to Beat has a time to beat sort feature, so I used it to go down the list from the shortest time investment to the longest. From here, I'll list every game that I completed from here on out. Toe Jam and Earl, a relatively short game that follows the roguelike conventions and uses hip hop as a motif. I actually really like this one. It's much better with multiple players. The second game I beat was Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo. I didn't actually really like this one as much as people hyped it up to be. It's relatively chunky. Sprites kind of make it hard to really play the game. It relies a a lot on memorization of knowing what's coming, especially with hazards and stuff like that. It was still relatively quick to beat though, not more than about half a day, less than half probably. Mega Man X7, this game suffers from a lot of the same problems Donkey Kong Country kind of does. A lot of uh, really chunky enemies, um, really easy to not know exactly what's coming up ahead of you without dying a couple of times. All the enemy HP values are also doubled, so you'll be dying a lot without any power-ups available to you. Um, I think this is only in the American version of the game. In the Japanese version, they're all the appropriate values, so just keep that in mind if you plan on playing Mega Man X7. The Legend of Dark Witch for the Nintendo DS. This game marries the gameplay styles of Mega Man and Gradius. It's a relatively simple platformer, with each stage starting out with a phase that allows you to power up your meter without major stage hazards. There's also a shop that helps power you up. This should help any uh, players that are having a difficult time and find themselves grinding levels over and over in order to beat them, with an option to make the game easier. Witch and Hero. This is a relatively short game where you protect a stone witch from oncoming enemies. It's very arcade style and has some money management elements, and it's very short. Uh, just a reminder here that I'm not trying to convince you to buy any of these games. Please do not. I'm just uh, trying to convince you to start with your own short ones, so, so please don't go adding any of these to your wish list, I beg of you. Mega Man X8, this game really improved on X7's tag system, and the tag tutorial presented during the opening stage is way better. The upgrade system is also more accessible, as it focuses on the level grind to currency format, rewarding players for their perseverance rather than X7's rescue system, which only rewards highly skilled players and repeated trial to perfect runs at certain problem areas the first time around, and it's very much like Mega Man 8 and 7 with their screw system, in a way. Azure Striker Gun Vault 2. This is a platformer with an emotionally driven story. It was very good. I really enjoyed it. It has some uh, problems with grinding and uh, item acquisition, but other than that, it's a really solid game. Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. Uh, I actually bought this for the Wii like a long time ago when it came out on Virtual Console. Yes, I've had it for that long. Yes, I did not finish it. I actually haven't beaten a lot of Mario games. I have beaten Donkey Kong 94 and Mario Advance and New Super Mario Brothers. And just recently, Mario Odyssey. I do not like any of the 3D Mario games. Sorry. Except for Odyssey. That one is solid. Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. It's an extremely accessible Metroidvania and it's relatively easy to beat. It gets quite challenging during the later part of the game, and I also got the true ending, so I didn't stop with just a normal ending. New Super Luigi U for the Nintendo Wii U. You can skip a significant part of this game, and New Super Mario Bros. U if you're lucky. So this one didn't actually take me very long to beat. Shantae Half Genie Hero. This one's just as good as Pirate's Curse. Didn't feel quite as cut up and backtracking, and yet still got the true ending. 
Wario Land 2. This one was really fun. I beat all the different paths, and I liked its multiple ending concept. This one's just a standard platformer, if you were curious about what type of game it was. Super Metroid for the Super Nintendo. I played this on Virtual Console as well. As a Mega Man fan, this one wasn't too hard, and I really learned how to appreciate Samus as a character more. There are a few segments that can be pretty confusing, and you can get lost easy. Uh, this was when I finally started to start consulting walkthroughs again. Metabots AX. I played a little bit of the RPG in the GameCube game. This one is not as good as those. It's a shame because it's interesting, but the way stage hazards are implemented, and part HP leaving you vulnerable if you get damaged too much, it makes this a fighting game where you really can't make comebacks happen. Guacamelee. Super Turbo Championship uh, Edition. Uh, that's really a mouthful. I don't even know if I remembered that correctly. I'm the grandchild of Mexican immigrants, so I really appreciated all the love that was put into this game. Undertale. I actually had this one for a quite a while, and I know it's short. And I had the demo for a long time, and I never even opened it <laughs> before it even got big. So um, I played through to the true ending this time, and it was really nice. It really made me miss all the friends that I've made over the years. This one is a shmup disguised as an RPG. Or an RPG with shmup elements. Take your pick. Blaster Master Zero 2. This one's also an extremely solid game made by NC Creates. It's very short as well, but there's a lot of exploration. This one also kind of fits into the Metroidvania camp. It's uh, more accessible than the first game thanks to the planetary mapping system and the countering. You'll really enjoy this one if you have it on your library already. Deltarune Chapter 1. I actually like this way more than Undertale. I saw myself reflected in all the main cast in different ways, so it really resonated with me. This one marries the RPG and shmup elements of Undertale way better than that game did. And the music is more improved in my opinion. Final Fantasy Adventure. I was surprised by how captivated I was by this one. Um, FF Adventure is part of the Mana series of games, and I bought the collection to support the porting of handheld titles for the most part. This is an action RPG similar to The Legend of Zelda with more RPG-like genre elements. I'm a huge fan of the Mega Man Battle Network series, so this one held my attention very well, to be honest. Bayonetta, a third-person stylish brawler by Platinum Games. It's actually not a relatively long game, and I didn't know that from first glance. Um, it is kind of hard and a bit unforgiving, and it, there is a lot of trial and error, but I mean, I beat Beautiful Joe and Wonderful 101, so I knew I what I was getting myself into. This one, like other Platinum titles, also kind of suffers from the grind to get currency to buy power-up system but the cost of some items is so high that it tends to reward only highly skilled players. There are easier modes though, so it's not like a total loss. Valhalla is an amazing visual novel that sparkles with style. The OST is comforting and energetic. It made me calm down and realize that even if things got really tough, customer service isn't all that bad. After all the platformers, this one was really nice, almost like a cool glass of beer after a long, hard day at work. Gun Vault Chronicles Luminous Avenger X. Like Azure Striker Gun Vault, this one is a really solid platformer. As with Gun Vault, there's a grade system, but instead of grinding for materials, you simply grind for the currency to afford power-ups. This makes things a lot quicker. You could even unequip them to make stages more challenging as you perfect your runs. Princess Maker 3, a money schedule management game where you raise a daughter to marry a prince. This one has multiple endings, so I just made it a point to simply just get one of the endings and have my daughter survive. Which I did. My daughter became a hard soldier, uh, not a princess, but uh, she was really strong. <laughs> Pokemon Shield. 
I'll get more into this later, but when Pokemon Shield came out, I immediately put my bat log onto the side and attempted a Professor Oak run in this game. It took me about 100 hours. I would say it was about 10 times more than the average speed run or normal run for most people, but it was very satisfying and had a lot of fun using multiple teams against the final bosses in Winden. I was also 10 levels under leveled by the end of the game. You can even see here that I have most of the Pokemon available in the game by the time I reach Winden for the first time. Just a little bit of loading. I want to make sure you guys see this. See? Told you. I'm not lying. I recorded the whole thing. Ha. Again, so Skydrift. This is a relatively short racing game with Toho characters and uses a double dash sort of system. It's really cheap and it's fun in its own way. And it's also very... I mean it when I say it's very short. It's probably just like an hour long. You have to swerve through rings to keep up your speed too. Um, just to keep in mind. At this point, it was already 2020, so I decided to do The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. It was already halfway completed. I had beat half the Divine Beast, found all the memory locations, I had gotten the Master Sword, infiltrated Ganon's castle to scope things out. It didn't really take me too long to find everything I was missing. But this game is really long. Well, it's as long as you want it to be, at least. Travis strikes again, no more heroes. This one couldn't have come at a more apt time. It felt like a real celebration of everything I beat up to this point, in its own unique sort of way. This one is a top-down brawler, but each level plays sort of like a mini-game with its own internal logic and lore. The Dragon Quest Ports, the OG JRPG. It's not that hard and it's not that long. The quick saves helped a lot. They'll help you if you get lost or anything like that. Mega Man Legends 2. I actually have the Japanese PSP port of these games, uh, 1 and 2, but I never got around to finishing 2. I've beaten Mega Man Legends 1 multiple times. It's actually one of my favorite games. Um, I feel the final boss in this one is a bit too hard because the arena is a bit small. And it's also got a difficulty setting in the way of the licensing system. Uh, I didn't realize that when I got to the end, so uh, I had to deal with a hard mode final boss. Can you believe that How Long to Beat says that this one takes longer than Luigi U? If you can find shortcuts, you can cut time significantly. And I found them, and it didn't really take me too long to beat. Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D. This was when trial and error had finally hit its peak with me. As the game's difficulty in resetting your position, along with blocking off accessible lives arbitrarily via collectible coins, felt like a nuisance. I did not like Donkey Kong Country Returns. I do not plan on playing Tropical Freeze because of this. The thing that bothered me the most? Final Boss has a barrel rocket segment right at the beginning. And well, I'll let Valvatore speak for me. You must first receive your opponent's attacks in a dignified manner! Desco had no idea. It is absolutely unacceptable for you to deal lethal damage on your first turn. It completely ruins the balance of the game. I cannot approve of someone like you being the final boss. In fact, no one would approve of such a lousy game if it had that. The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. This one was a lot of fun and there's a lot of exploring to do. Uh, it wasn't too hard to figure things out. I've actually played it multiple times, I just never beat it. I did feel like the boss rush at the end was a bit unnecessary for a Zelda game, though. Sonic Forces. Everybody kind of dunks on this one. I do like the way they incentivize players to perfect their run by putting in the SOS system.
And finally, at the beginning of March 2020, I beat Celeste. It had everything I wished other games had in terms of modern accessibility. Like a literal gem in the rough of a game. And the best game to round out the year with. Especially after all those platformers. Wouldn't you agree? In order to keep on task, I found ways to help keep my momentum up in paring down my backlog. First off, I made the conscious decision to stick to mostly the main campaigns. Unless I happened to believe that I needed to complete something more to make the feel immersed. I kept my play sessions to a bare minimum of a couple 2-3 to three hour sessions per day, punctuated by 2 hour breaks in between. Sometimes when I felt burnt out, I didn't pick up any games for a few days and that was okay. And sometimes I would binge if I felt like a game was particularly short. I made sure to make time to eat and step away so that I wouldn't be overly stressed or immersed in the game. After all, if I did happen to get immersed, as I did with Celeste and Valhalla or a Luminous Avenger X, that was something that would occur naturally, rather than me hyping myself up and wasting energy focusing on that perfect player mindset. I'm pretty sure this also affects a lot of YouTubers that like stream and stuff like that too. Even though I wasn't recording, and only recording in short clips sometimes, and didn't feel the need to particularly perform well for any reason, it can be kind of draining sometimes. So immersion was the furthest thing from my mind when tackling my backlog. That's not to say I didn't appreciate each story or design choice, but rather it helped to expedite things a bit. The next tactic I employed was that alongside my how long to beat list and me sorting things out by time, I kept a checklist of the games I was playing in the order I was completing them in. This was something I had picked up from an interview Lifehacker had with Jerry Seinfeld, where he had mentioned that he would put a big X on a calendar whenever he completed a joke. And not breaking the chain was a big motivator for him to get up and make up one new joke a day at the very least. However, I think sometimes it's good to put the controller down some days. So instead of playing a little bit every day, what I focused instead was on making a checklist of titles and putting an X every time I completed one of those. Focusing instead on not breaking the chain of completions and following the list that I had. I also had limited my purchases during this time a bit, focusing mainly on established series that I would like to see more in the future, such as Pokemon or uh, Nipponichi software titles, uh, Capcom games, or indie games with unique gameplay. All of these methods helped keep my attention of the goals at hand, them being try not to buy too many more games unless you're supporting a series you really want to see another entry in and complete your backlog. Those were my goals. The games listed in this section are relatively straightforward. They're all pretty easy games to complete, and one would wonder how they sat so long in my backlog to even begin with, but they did. A lot if not all of these games have extra content too, and I had to make an effort only to engage with what I was willing to put up with. For example, games with an optional good ending such as Shantae and the Pirate's Curse, Luminous Avenger X, Gunvolt 2, and Undertale. I took it upon myself to see the good endings, but anything with a heartier challenge that required heavy time sync based learning, such as the genocide route in Undertale, or um, gaining more than the 99 strawberries that I did in the fourth ending of Celeste, only doing two routes in Princess Maker 3, simply completing the game in the way I felt best in Valhalla, dealing with what I got, I didn't try to go back to experiencing everything right away again. There was one exception though, one tiny little exception I gave myself, because I knew that the game could be beaten 10 hours based on what I heard, but I didn't really want it to end like that, because I kind of have a method with them, and that was uh, Pokemon Shield. While I won't get too much into it here, um, I, heard, I attempted a Professor Oak run, I I'd completed it, except um, for some reason I couldn't find a... Uh, which one was it? It was a relatively hard Pokemon to get that only came out during one type of weather. Uh, Dronpa, yes. Uh, I couldn't find it in any dens. Uh, the thunder came around to when I was um, too weak to catch one. 
and when I could finally catch one, it was already too late. I've been doing this since they implemented Experience All as a regular feature in the games, um, and it gave me easily 90 more hours just to beat the main story, but it's very satisfying to play through like that. Challenges can easily add or subtract from the experience with and enjoyment of a game. It can be satisfying to see what you can accomplish within a certain amount of time. And while it may add time sometimes, I'm saying time a lot, uh, the experience can be worth it, even refreshing sometimes. I said it again. But you don't have to take those up if you don't want to. It's perfectly fine to do the bare minimum, even using safe states if something gets too annoying or rough. If you get lost or anything like that in RPGs or something. As long as you're simply beating the game for the first time. It's also fine to walk away and take a break if need be. There's a lot more I want to talk about, but I'll be separating these videos into like year segments to talk about the different aspects of the backlog and the different like different problems that kind of came tangible during each of them. Um, as I feel each year highlights its like own unique set of problems. So for this segment, it was uh, February 2019 to early March 2020. Uh, keep that in mind when I make the next video, because March 2020, as we all know, is when the pandemic happened. <laughs> and that is going to be when I had to deal with longer games, and I thought I was going to have a different kind of problem. All I focused during this segment, 2019 to 2020, uh, was uh, getting into a constant rhythm of game completion. Um, you know, hitting that dopamine a little bit more all the time, a little bit slower and slower, until it became more consistent and it became a habit, but not like a bad habit. Now, I'm not one for popularity. I don't care about my subscriber count like the other YouTubers do, because I'm not really doing this to, like, make a channel because I want to make videos. That's not my deal. Uh, I'll make a video like once a month if I'm lucky. Uh, I did try doing a, a whole bunch of uh, uploads, but I realized that I was using it more as a storage unit than as um, a means to get things out there. Uh, so anyways, if you want to hear more about the backlog journey and what other ideas I have or techniques I have for completing it, um, or any short reviews on, of the games. I know that the reviews that I had were kind of lackluster. I could have gone in more in depth with each of those games. That wasn't what I was trying to do either. <laughs> but I could make longer reviews if you guys want to hear my thoughts, if you like the small ones. Um, you could follow me if you want to. I'm not going to be antagonistic. Um, uh, you can like the video if you liked it. That that I kind of want to see if people want to hear more, you know, you can leave a comment too. Uh, if this blows up and it's like on people's recommendeds, uh, well, uh, what can I do, you know? Uh, but thank you for listening, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Uh, see you in the next video.